Have you ever wanted to give someone a link to test out your web application, but you didn't want to publish that application first? That used to be complicated. Now it's incredibly easy with dev tunnels. Let's see how they work in 10 minutes or less. So I have here a Blazor sample application. And if we run this right now, you'll see that this is just the root application, the base application. It's, there's nothing special here. It's just, you know, a Blazor application. You know, we have a counter, it works, fetch data, it works, okay? But the big problem here is this right here. When it says local host, that means it works on this machine. It does not work if I were to say, hey, can you try this web application out unless that person were to physically come and sit at my desk and work on my machine, they wouldn't be able to run this application. Local host is for the current machine you're on. So if somebody else put local host in their browser, it's gonna be for that machine, not this machine. So how do you share this out right now? Maybe as a you know a proof of concept or, hey, can you test this out and see if it's, you know, there's something weird going on or, you know, whatever, you can give a person a URL. But right now we can't because this does not work outside this machine. So how do we give a person a URL? Well, we use dev tunnels. So if we in this drop down here where it says HTTPS, if we do the drop down, we'll see we have dev tunnels and no active tunnel. Now, what a dev tunnel is, is actually where it will, it will create a, a way to redirect traffic from the web into your machine safely using a tunnel. And you set this tunnel up and you get to determine it, how long it's active for and so many other things. So let's create a tunnel. So right now it says, hey, this is a count you're gonna use because that's important. If we get down here to the very last question, um, which is laid out well and they explained it well, I, I think, they said, okay, um, you need to determine who has access to this tunnel. So when it's private, only the account that created it can access it, which is this account right here, the account that I'm logged in as. But if you said to organizational, then anybody in the organization that this account is a part of can access it. And public says, hey, you know what? We're not gonna even authenticate you. We're just gonna leave us fully open to the public. Now I'm gonna set mine to public just because it's a demonstration and I'll leave it as temporary, not, not permanent. So the next one up says, hey, what, what type of tunnel do you want? Do you want it to be a temporary tunnel? Which means that every time you restart Visual Studio, it's going to give or create a new URL. Or do you want it to be persistent? Which is that the URL will be the same for the life of the application forever, whenever you um, decide to you know, get rid of this tunnel. That tunnel is gonna always have the same URL if you say persistent. So which one you use? Well, if you're gonna do a one-off quick test, the temporary URL is probably the best because it's quick and easy and you know, you're know you not gonna be saving it anyway. Whereas maybe if you're gonna be you know, working in a team environment and doing these tests often, you might wanna create a persistent one so that they can just bookmark that URL and you can tell them, hey, go test it now, go test it now. And then it's just easier to try to pass that URL around every single time. We're gonna do temporary. So we're kind of reading from the bottom up here. Um, what's the name for this tunnel? This is not a significant name. It's just the name you're gonna give this tunnel so you can reference it in that drop down list where it said no tunnels active. So they can say temp tunnel or temp public tunnel. Let's call it temp public tunnel. That kind of describes all the things it's doing. We hit okay and it's been successfully created and is the current active tunnel. If we do this drop down again, you'll notice that dev tunnels, we have none and now temp public tunnel. There's that name. So right now, since this is checked, if I, un if I go back to none and I run this and it launches, nothing changes, okay? It's still local host, you know, 7175. But if I were to activate that, so go back to here and say temp public tunnel and select that. So now it's active. We go back over here and look, yes, it's checked. If we run this again, just run it regular, but when we do, we're gonna get this dialogue. You're about to connect to a developer tunnel at, and here is the, the, the URL. And again, this is gonna be different every time I relaunch Visual Studio. If I hit continue, 
And there we go. It works the same. I can click the buttons. I can fetch data. All the stuff is still there, but notice the URL. That URL is an actual live URL on the web. Now, if you were to try to type this in your browser right now, as you're watching the video, it's not going to work. And it's a couple reasons for that. First of all, by the time you watch this video, I will have deleted this tunnel. But second of all, every time we look at, every time you launch Visual Studio and restart it, it's gonna have a different URL. Let's just copy this. So I've copied this and I'm going to, let's open up, ah, program.cs is fine. We'll come down here after run and we're just gonna paste that in so we know what the URL was. We're gonna launch it again. And we do, it gets the same URL uh, because we have not restarted Visual Studio. So if we copy this and look, just to prove it's the same, oops, I copied the HTTPS. There we go. So it's the same one. Now let's do this. Let's go ahead and restart Visual Studio. So I say stop debugging, close it out. My browser window is open. Let's um, relaunch the application. Wait for Visual Studio to start. Wait for it to load. We're gonna check to make sure our dev tunnel is still active. Wait for it. Try it again. Oh, there we go. So right now there's no active tunnel. So you again, check temp public tunnel. Now you launch this again. And there we go, hit continue. And it says we've got a new tunnel. And if we look at this URL, let's copy just the, the tunnel portion. And we come down here and look, different URL. So every time I restart Visual Studio, it's gonna get a new URL. Now notice the dash 7175, that's the port number. Um, but that first part is a randomly generated URL. So every time you restart Visual Studio, you get a new one of these URLs if you use the, the temporary um, designation. So why are these valuable? Well, you can hand these out to your coworkers. They can test out your application very quickly and easily across the network or even across the internet. So I gave this to uh, one of you know my web developer. I said, hey, try us out. We're in different locations. We're in different uh, cities. And we were able to both work on seeing the site and both run the site from different locations. Now, I will point something out because it might trip you up. Your website will not run if you're not running Visual Studio. So if I were to take this URL, the new URL, and I were to come over here and I were to say, let's run this site. And uh, it tries and it tries and it tries and nothing's going to happen. It's trying, but the problem is, is that a dev tunnel, what it is is a tunnel onto your actively running web server. And since your web, web server is not running, there's no dev tunnel. Now, if I were to start this back up again, now it's gonna launch the browser. We can close that one out, but let's go back to our original timed out version. Hit refresh, wait for it. And this should launch our site eventually. Oh, no, it won't because I hit, I hit stop. Um, let's do this again. So it's timed out again, wait for it to launch. Okay, it's launched. Let's launch the other one that's that's currently um, sitting at the 404. We hit refresh. There we go. Now we've, we've proven that yes, it does in fact um, launch this. So just to be clear, again, it disconnected when I um, closed down Visual Studio. It has to be running in Visual Studio. That's what you're doing. You're testing this out. But that's what dev tunnels are and how you can use them in your testing. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments, if you're gonna use this, how much you use this. And as always, I am Tim Corey.